This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be a Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list discussion video, specifically on the June 12th, 2017 Forbidden and Limited list that has been announced to us literally within the last 24 to 48 hours. Depending on when you view this, it'll probably be much later, but regardless, I decided to do just a regular bog standard ban list discussion, an actual thought out, like, sort of nonsense. Uh, because I didn't want to do a live reaction because that would mean I would rush my thought processes. I would basically come up with thoughts on the spot. And it's just not something that I felt like it was uh, beneficial to you, my viewers, and just as my channel's growth as a whole in terms of the content that I try to put out. Live reactions just don't really seem to fit the bill. As well as every other YouTuber in God's creation is doing live reaction videos. So it's really oversaturated with videos of people going, oh my god, I can't believe they did this, and then giving just some like superficial opinion on the fly. That's just not something that I feel like I want to do uh, at this specific point in time. But anyway, so this ban list came out of nowhere. I, as well as many other people that I know of personally, did not expect a ban list at all between now and when Lynx came out because we were just expecting the format that we were playing in to be the Nationals format for us in the TCG North America side. We didn't expect anything else happening. Now I know there's going to be a lot of national level events in Europe and stuff like that before the list goes into effect, but I believe Euros is going to be after the list goes into effect if my, if my knowledge of that is correct in terms of the dates, uh, but still. Like, no one really expected this to happen, so it does really kind of fall into the category of emergency ban list, but it's not, though, because of the way that Konami knows how it's made its lingo. This is not an adjusted list. They're not pulling that bullshit again at this current point in time. It's been about a month and a half since the previous list went into effect, and this list actually doesn't go into effect until June 12th. It was spoiled to us on May 18th, but it doesn't go into effect for three weeks into the future. So it's a very, very preemptive list in terms of the time frame that we have between now and when it goes live and all that sort of stuff, which is another interesting thing. Konami has never really given us this much head notice on uh, when a ban list was dropping before as it has now. Like We usually got like a week and a half at most. And now we literally have like three and a half weeks before this list goes into effect. Now that means there's three and a half weeks of events happening between now and then. But still, this ban list has been all sorts of weird in terms of how it's been handled, how it came out of nowhere, and uh, just all that sort of stuff. But anyway, this ban list made six very important changes. It's a very small list, which I kind of agree with. If, it's, if they're going to keep doing ban lists every like two to three months, and do small tidy cleanups like they used to do in the past, like they did in like 2014, I would be all for that. None of this eight month long bullshit where they just let, let a format roll for eight months and then touch like three cards that matter. No, let's not do that. Let's, let's stay away from that. But anyway, this list made six very important changes. Elder Entity Norden got forbidden. Speedroid Teratop went to one. That Grass Looks Greener went to one. And then... Performer Pal, Skull Corbat Joker, Pendulum Call, and Wisdom Eye Magician all came off the Forbidden Limited list entirely, being at three copies per deck. Now, what does this mean? This means that there's three changes that are meant to be limiting factors for current decks in the format. The biggest one being Elder Entity Norton being banned. This means that all the Zodiac combo, Fusion Substitute combos and stuff are completely dead because there's zero way for you to use those combos with no Norton. That's the entire purpose of the combo in terms of its functionality. And then also we have all these other like FTK decks and just like degenerate strategies that relied on Norton to just give you extra cards. Those go away as well. Norden is definitely a card that should have been banned probably around this time last year. It's been banned in the OCG for ages. It's definitely a card that has some very degenerate card design. It probably would have been a lot different 
had Norton had a hard once per turn effect and not just like, oh, as many times as you can summon this card, you can use its effect in a turn. That's kind of where the unfairness of this card started to lie. Um, so, like, it was just an error in design. I mean, it was one of the first waves of Korean exclusives, and, I mean, I can, I can expect, I can, I can honestly sit back and say that maybe they just designed it poorly. I mean, if you look at Paleo, that's kind of, in theory, designed poorly as well, and that was another Korean exclusive archetype. Uh, so it's just, they might have to work on their, uh, card design sorts of stuff, because it literally goes elsewhere, and it either is just, like, a format-defining force, or it gets banned in the case of Norden, so who knows? Uh, but anyway, Norden being banned is huge. Norden definitely is overstayed its welcome, uh, and it's definitely influenced a lot of the past few formats in terms of how things have played out. Uh, just instant fusioning into one card rank fours is in theory healthy until you start combining it with all of the things that complicate formats. Uh, it starts getting a little bit more hard to quantify. In a vacuum, just bringing back literally a card with no effect and making a rank 4 for one card is kind of alright, even though that does still kind of break the Xyz mechanic because the Xyz mechanic was meant to invest multiple resources into rank 4s and stuff like that. Um, but regardless, Speedroid Terratop is a hit that I actually don't really agree with on this list. Uh, Speedroid Terratop... Being at 1 doesn't really hamper the performance of Zoo at all. Even with Norden gone, the Zoo deck can still access Invoker through the newest release that was given to us that basically accelerates the rank 3 pool, the Predator Plant Scorpio and Darling Cobra package. And that also just allows you to, it does use your normal summon, but it also allows you a much better quality play when it goes off. Because Teratop into Invoker into Rat, you had to have another card to work with there. But with just Scorpio taking up your normal summon, you get to search Brilliant Fusion or Instant Fusion. Now, Instant Fusion doesn't have Norden to go with it to complicate things there, but you could still just Instant Fusion out for a regular level 4 fusion monster, and that happens to complete your play string if you summon a Scorpio as the first card in your play, because you can go Scorpio into Darling Cobra, you search Instant Fusion, you make your Invoker, you get your Rap here out of deck, you stack up into your Dryden with a spare Rap here on the board, and then you get your search for whatever you wanted, like a whip tail or something off your broad bull. And then you have that instant fusion that you can play for whatever level 4 you want. And you can overlay that spare rap here with that level 4 into a Digusto Emerald, detaching the rap here, resetting your resource pool into the deck, drawing a card. So off of that Cobra plus a monster that you discarded, you still yield yourself a plus 2 to plus 3 in card advantage. And you searched a whip tail to be a nice defensive line with the Dryden to allow it to be, you know, protected and allow it to be removal, non-targeting, banishing removal, stuff like that. So, Zoo basically just kind of winds back the clock a bit to how it was pre Luna Light combo. Even with two rat pairs, Laika, or excuse me, Shaka 9 just kind of really fills that gap alongside Ram Ram pretty efficiently. So there's not really that big of a difference between the way the deck will be played post ban list, post this June ban list, and the way that it was played pre Luna Light combo at its very first YCS. YCS Seattle, before the Luna Light combo was, you know, <laughs> in basically implemented everywhere, um, that YCS was very characterized by very slow, methodical, and grindy Zoo mirrors. And Zoo was still very much a very good deck at out resourcing the opponent if you were not playing Zoo, because it still was characterized by good one card plays. And that doesn't go away with this ban list. Terratop being limited, all it does that is that hampers BA, that hampers other decks like the Speedroid archetype itself. This was like their best starter card. And meanwhile, you have a card like MX Saber Invoker that's been around for a long time in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And has had justifiable reasons to be hit or banned in the past as well as now. Especially when you consider that even with Terratop being hit, again, we've been given the replacement already. And in theory, you have more of the replacement than you did of Terra Top because you could play Lone Fire Blossoms to get Scorpio. Essentially meaning you're playing six copies of Scorpio instead of the three Terra Top. So I don't really think there's any like solving of a problem that's being done here as far as as far as the scope of doing anything to Terra Top. Now that grass looks greener is another card that's interesting as far as a hit. This looks more like a uh, attempt to push product than anything else. Uh, that grass looks greener, while a card that says touch 20 cards in your deck at once is arguably degenerate that grass looks greener was a card that was naturally self-balancing much like dark worlds as a deck to make a to make the closest comparison i can think of 
Dark Worlds were only good if nobody else was playing them. And the same looks like to, the same looks true with that grass looks greener. If your opponent is playing a 60 card deck, your grass looks greener is not going to be doing anything. It's not going to be getting value. It's not going to be doing things that you want it to do that you built your deck around and now you're just inherently playing a less consistent pile of cards. Both you and your opponent sit down to the table knowing that a lot of what your deck is capable of doing is dependent on what your opponent's deck size is. So that grass looks greener is definitely a card that was self-checking, and then we already had cards like Ghost Ash implemented into the format. Ash Blossom and Joy Spring naturally just negates that grass looks greener. It's a hand trap that can be played on your opponent's turn one before you've ever had a turn. So that grass looks greener was a weird hit for me. I mean, I'm kind of glad that I don't have to influence my deck size based off one card in the game now. But now that it exists at one, it's a really sacky card. You're less consistent to see it in 60 cards. You could play left arm offerings if you wanted to bring it back up to four copies. But at the same time, if your left arm offering gets ghost dashed, you are going to legitimately slit your wrists and bleed out onto the table because you've banished your hand as cost for left arm and now you are left with nothing off of that ghost dash. So <laughs> have fun with that one. Now, the last three and most interesting changes to the list can all be lumped up into one. That is the Skull Crobat Joker, Pendulum Call, and Wisdom Eye Magician Complete Unlimiting. This is obviously a cash grab, but also a really interesting one that I'm actually kind of okay with. The Pendulum Evolution set that was the starter deck that is now the set is going to be legal for our Nationals. It's going to be legal, I believe, on, what, June 20th? So it's going to be legal for a fair bit of time, like a couple of weeks before Nationals, and then there's a little bit of time after Nationals before Links set in. I think those take place on July 20th. So I think the new Pendulum Edition deck is literally legal for a month of time before Link format rolls around and just flips the script on us and tells us that we can't play Pendulum decks the way we wanted to. Now, with Skullcrabat Joker at 3, and Wisdom Eye at 3, and Pendulum Call at 3, this all just heavily supports the Magician Pendulum deck and archetype and the new magician pendulums that are coming out in pendulum evolution which means that konami is one trying to push their product but two they are trying to give pendulums the best chance they can to do as well as possible at the last event that they are foreseeably going to be able to be played at as a mechanic that i kind of have to respect not only because of the fact that i love pendulum magicians performer pals and pendulum magicians are like my favorite 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 uh pendulum archetype performer pals are just broken and they're very splashable with other archetypes like they play very well with the magicians but pendulum magicians themselves is one of the most broken fair pendulum archetypes that we've ever seen in the game like wisdom eye magician replacing your scales with vanillas just for quick plus ones it's it's plus ones but at the same time it's also just like very good key card advantage. Your vanilla scales have removal effects in them, but they cost cards. Your pendulum call protects your scales, but it also cuts you off from certain uh, pendulum magician effects. Like, like that's actually just cool. This entire pendulum magician archetype was designed so well for a pendulum theme, but because it's pendulums, it was above and beyond everything else that was around it. And it's just so cool. It's one of my favorite pendulum themes that I've ever seen. Like, it might actually outrank Performer Pals in terms of the scale of how much I enjoy playing the deck. Just because everything is very methodical, everything was intended to have an interaction, a check and a balance with itself. You get cards back off Ove Dragon that you discarded for cost for things like Pendulum Call and your scales. It's not overwhelming amounts of advantage that's just getting pendulumed and thrown at you every single turn. It's just like a slow burning flame that just starts really strong and then also just keeps gathering up little bits of force and energy as it goes based off what you get access into off of your cards. And that's the coolest thing for it to be one of the best pendulum archetypes that's existed in the game. Uh, but so for the new pendulum magicians to be coming out that actually just take the deck from like 0 to 100 incredibly quickly uh, co combined with the old performer pal stuff that we have access to because of skull crowbat joker being at three and all that sort of stuff um, as well as the newest released card duelist alliance which actually just allows a lot of decks to go really bonkers as well uh, there's a lot of different capabilities that we have for nationals as far as pendulum magician decks as long as they can reliably out masterpiece and so that's something that i am looking a lot of forward into testing into 
Uh, I really, really want to start testing a lot of Pendulum variants for Nationals with the adage of, can this deck reliably compete with cards like Masterpiece, the true Draco Slaying King? Uh, if it can, then amazing. I'm going to have so much fun at Nationals because of the fact that I love, 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 love Pendulum archetypes that are very, very advantage-based and advantage-yielding through some mismatched, yet properly matched, and good effects, and that is the Magician Pendulum deck and Performer Pals. Either of those two decks, I love them. These other Pendulum decks like Metal Foes, where it's just very obviously cookie cutter sequence generic card advantage and stuff like that, no, that's that's not really the kind of thing I like. I like these decks like Draco Pals and like Pepe Magicians and stuff like that, where it's literally like you have these separate engines that are Pendulum engines that they work together on a certain level. You have to structure them and get them to work together in the way that you need them to operate. Those are the kind of things that I like to do with these sorts of decks. And they play well with each other in certain aspects, and then in some aspects they directly contradict each other, and that's actually just great considering the power level of these cards being a Pendulum Mechanic deck. But regardless, those are my opinions on like these cards moving around. I think that the Pendulum Magician cards being unlimited is going to yield a lot of fun. <laughs> in the format when we start getting these pendulum cards in terms of just like we're just gonna start going ham with pendulums have a big last hurrah and see them out with glory but hopefully things can uh things can do well in the uh, masterpiece front as i've already said but as for the other things as i said norden deserved to be hit a long time ago i'm glad that bastard is gone uh, it doesn't influence deck building anymore terra top again i feel like this was like a false martyr i feel like you definitely should have hit Invoker, because Invoker has been relevant many times in the past, and is relevant in FTK decks, and we already have a replacement for Terratop that is arguably better than the Terratop that you took away from us. So, there is that as well, but these are, as always, just my subjective opinions. I would love to know your own opinions in the comments down below of what you thought of this list, this little baby list and whatnot. Do you want to see more of these little baby lists where Konami literally just puts something out like every two or three months and says, okay, we're going to we're gonna change one, two, three, maybe six things? Because I would much rather have a list like this every two to three months than the April 1st list that we just got where it was like, uh, like what, eight or nine changes? But at the same time, none of them really did anything because it was like pushing product more than it was trying to hinder the format. I want to know what your opinions are on that in the comments down below as well. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Really curious to hear what those are. But other than that, check out the links in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages if you want to support the channel directly and help some future projects that I have planned come into fruition a bit sooner. Then definitely go check out the Patreon page that is linked in the description. It is a fantastic way to show your support if it's like something that you like. If you like this channel and want to see it grow and do different things in the future, then definitely go check that out. And check out the reward tiers. If you want to get into a personal Discord server where me and a few other people are constantly talking on a 24-7 basis whenever I have access to a computer or phone, and getting deck help, giving deck help, doing all this sort of stuff, as well as playing games and stuff, then definitely check out the reward tiers and see what is to your fancy and liking. But other than that, that is it for this video. Thanks for watching, as I've already said. Thank you for your time, as usual, and take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.